Hey guys, welcome to Cricket Fanatics magazine and today I am back with another exclusive um, interview conversation. You know how we like to do it here at Cricket Fanatics magazine. We like to have conversations about cricket and trying to understand uh, the different levels in the game and trying to get a better understanding of how our youngsters are obviously settling in in senior cricket etc. And I think this is probably the the best possible guy we could get on the show to have this discussion with because it is quite fresh, it is quite new for him. And uh, it would be nice to get an understanding of what the what it is like to settle in, in in playing senior cricket and playing domestic cricket in South Africa, especially taking that step up from the under-19 level and then going into senior cricket. But before we get going with today's interview, before we get started, there's a couple of things I'd like you guys to please do. We re recently just passed the milestone, so we want you guys to get us to the next milestone. So subscribe to the channel, click that notification bell for all future videos please we also would like you guys to please download the latest issue of cricket fanatics magazine monthly every issue is 100 free straight to your inbox every single month the link is on the screen as well as in the description and if you want to support us here and what we are doing here at cricket fanatics magazine you can become a patron today link is on the screen as well as in the description right now you know that you have to smash that like button comment and share and go to cricketfanaticsmag.com for all your regular updates so without further ado I would like to get straight into today's interview. You guys know that you can get your questions in the live chat, and I'll try to get to as many as possible. We're obviously going to have a conversation first, um, just um, me and the guest, and then you guys can get your questions in in the comment section, and I'll ask the ones out that I think is necessary. So without further ado, let's get in straight into today's interview. <laughs> A very good evening and welcome to Cricket Fanatics magazine. This is your exclusive interview. Today I am here with Mikhail Prince. I've been trying to get hold of him and trying to find him out there because after a magnificent performance not so long ago, I thought it would be a perfect opportunity for me to have a conversation with him, get to know him a little bit better, bring him on to the, the channel for the first time and really get to know what type of cricketer he is, what type of person he is, etc. So first and foremost, welcome to the show, Mikhail. How are you doing, bro? I'm good, thanks. And yourself? Yeah, and no, I'm good, thank you. Um, very um, excited to chat to you and, and get to know you a, lot, a little better. I normally start this conversations with a little bit of a dive into your into your past and, and how things started for you. So can you tell me a little bit about your cricket journey and where everything started for you as a cricketer? How did you get introduced to the game? Yeah, I think I probably I have a cricketing family, obviously, from the past. My uncles played, my mom played. So I started playing the game when I was four or five years old by Ottomans Cricket Club. And then, yeah, I just enjoyed it. Uh, probably, I played some cricket for Ottomans. Then I played some cricket at school in Mitchell's Plain. And then, I think grade three, grade four, I started with the JP21 Foundation. And I think that's where my cricketing journey started. Yeah. Can you maybe just tell me a little bit more about that club experience? I mean, how old were you when you started playing actually senior club cricket? I started playing senior club cricket when I was 14 years old, my first game. First game senior club cricket, I was 14. It was by United. I started, I obviously started at Ottomans, but then I went for a season or two to United with my brother and my uncle. And then I went back to Ottomans. So, yeah. So, what is that like, that experience like? Because, I mean, when you're a young boy, you're playing against now, obviously, men. Um, you're not necessarily going to be playing against people your own age anymore. What was that experience like? Um, the chirping, etc. What was that whole vibe like for you? Yeah, it was obviously a bit intimidating, but it was quite fun. I, don't, I really enjoy it when players come at me. I like it. So, I found it. Obviously, as a 14-year-old, it's going to be a bit, it's going to be a bit tough, but I kind of enjoyed it. I think my first senior game was against um, 
first first team senior game was against Saints, I think. Um, and yeah, I had I don't know I don't remember the guy's name, but yeah, I heard all the different type of swear words basically. So I mean, and it wasn't really bothering me because I like it when guys do that to me. So yeah. <laughs> Can I ask you, um, what high school did you go to um, and did they offer cricket um, at a at high level? I started at Kuro, um, grade 8 to grade 10. I don't, it wasn't really the best of cricket because we played against like schools like Fairmont, those, those type of schools, so it wasn't really a high level of cricket. So in grade 10, I probably, I was in the stat um, Kuro. And then just play some club cricket because I wasn't really enjoying my cricket there. It wasn't, yeah, it wasn't good. And then obviously Brendan Kleinans, my coach at Sachs, he found out that I'm going to do that. And then he got me to come to Sachs. Mm -hmm. And then it was a much higher standard, much higher level of training, games, everything. And I think that's what helped me to get to where I am today. And I needed to ask you that because, I mean, I don't think everybody on the channel knows your, your history and your story. Um, I want to ask you about that particular step up. I mean, at what moment during your high school did you think about becoming like a professional cricketer? Was it always on the cards for you and in your, in your, on your list of goals? Um, because obviously, like you mentioned, uh, I know exactly what you're talking about when you, when you speak about being at a cricketing or at a school that maybe doesn't offer cricket as its main thing or or the level of the standard of cricket is maybe not at the highest and then you make that step up into into a school like Sachs where I know that the level of cricket there is extremely high they've had a lot of people come through the system it's under 19 players etc um, so they have a very strong cricketing system and I know a lot about that um, from interviewing quite a few players from there so can you talk, talk to me about what the hardest part was about making that transition I mean obviously yes you've you were at the club, so you you already had that experience playing against older guys. So you might have your confidence might have been a little bit, um, oh, I could say, uh, already there. <laughs> but yeah. when it comes to moving over to a school of that standard, new environment. I mean, obviously, I went to Ronneboch, so the boys' schools. I know all about the culture and the pressure. <coughs> Can you talk to me about that transition and and how you settled in that sex and and how was that environment like for you? I think I settled in quite nicely because I played obviously with a lot of the guys that was by Sachs. They were provincial players. So I played provincial tournaments with a lot of the guys that was by Sachs. So it wasn't something that I'm moving into a new environment where I don't know anyone. But yeah, I had a couple of friends at Sachs, so it was it was quite welcoming. And I think the coach, Brendan Kleinans and Mr. Willows, they they kind of helped me settle in there properly. Look at Obviously, it wasn't the brightest in school, um, so I had to take school into consideration because I was at a, it's not a special school, but yeah, but it was a bit less um, learners for me to focus and everything. So yeah, I had to take everything into consideration. I wasn't like, it was a tough decision because obviously now I'm going into a proper government school where it's a class of 30 odd. So it was it was a tough decision, but in the end, I think I made the right decision by going to Sachs. Obviously, it wasn't going to be a lot of hard work academically, but I pushed through those times, and then obviously I knew it's going to benefit my cricket. So yeah, it was probably one of the best decisions cricket-wise to do. And when it comes to identifying yourself as a player. Um, we know that you're a batsman, of course, but when you when you try and identify yourself as a player from a young age, um, how did that come about for you? Um, is it was it a, just you the stumble upon it, or did did a coach maybe talk to you, or your uncle talk to you, and maybe say, you know what, we we identify you as this type of player, focus on this type of techniques, etc. How did your development start, and and what sort of things did you learn with regards to that? I think I was always an attacking batsman. Um, I always, during my young days, I just wanted to eat boundaries. I didn't really want to run. I wanted to eat boundaries. I wanted to eat fours, sixes. So I was always that attacking batsman. And I think, obviously, growing up, moving to sex, I learned a lot about myself 
regarding batting. So I kind of matured and I realized that it's not only about hitting boundaries. There's a lot more to it. So, and I only learned that through when we played time cricket, really. So, yeah. Um, and this year I learned a lot about, like, I learned so much that I didn't even know about batting, obviously in a pro professional environment. So, yeah, we'll I was always that. a we'll get to that. We'll get okay. to that a little later, <laughs> because okay. um, I, I want to still, I want to still hang on to the the, the pro provincial cricket. So you played provincial cricket throughout the age groups. Yeah, I played. I play. I think every year since I was ten years old, I played every year. So every second year I played A, and every second year I played B. So each age group I was B then A. Besides, when I got to Coke Week, I played two years in a row Coke Week. Okay, brilliant. Okay, so that will give me some nice insight into understanding um, your journey a little better because I wanted to ask you the 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 level of coaching between, for example, what you would learn at, at the provincial, um, and when you go to your provincial coach, because obviously your school coach you'll see, I don't know who you'll see more often between the two coaches, but um, can you talk to me about the difference in coaching? Like what sort of coaching will you get from your school and then what sort of coaching will you get from your provincial coach? What's the difference between the, the techniques or the mentality that they try to teach you? So lucky enough, I had my school coach as my provincial coach at both my Coke Weeks. So it wasn't something new to me. So we kind of worked in the provincial setup and at the school setup. So it wasn't really something new to me, getting to know the new coach and everything. So lucky enough, I had the same coach, if I can say like that. Yeah. Yeah, I should have actually known that. I've seen him around Newlands quite a bit. Um, so, um, when it got, did you ever have a private coach or have private coaching? Never. Never. Okay, cool. Never <laughs> and 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 from your, you said your uncle and your mom and etc. played cricket. Like, what sort of things did they teach you about the game that maybe uh, is different or that is unique? Look, I never really. Well, obviously, my mom always supported me. She always, on Saturdays when we play cricket, she's always the one that's there. So, yeah, I don't think I learned a lot about my mommy. She always gave advice, but it was never really, like, into detail about cricket. And then my uncle, I think I only started, like, speaking cricket to my uncle probably last year, this year. So... He was never really part, okay. like he wasn't, yo, how do I say this? He was obviously an uncle to me, but he was never like a coach to me. Like, yeah, it was never really a coaching type of thing from my uncle's side. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Okay, so let's go move on to your making that under um, the, the Coke Week and the experience playing Coke Week because... We know that there's time cricket section, and then there's obviously the white ball cricket section in within um, within Coke Week. Can you talk to me a little bit about that? Um, because was that that was before? Was that like your first time cricket? Was that like your first like um, experience of four day cricket, or not four day cricket, but red ball cricket? So in my Coke Weeks that I played, um, there was no time cricket. They changed it. Um, there was no time cricket. It was only 50 overs and then last day will be T20s. Mm -hmm. So there was no time cricket. It was just 50 overs and T20s, but it was playing with the red ball. <laughs> so it wasn't <laughs> white ball. So only in Cubs week was white ball. Okay, cool. Okay, that's awesome to, to, to know that. Um, so with regards to long format cricket, you haven't really had much um, exposure to that, or have you? No, not at all. No, I played... I think I played a two-day game for Western Province Academy, but that's okay. it. I never played the longer format. Okay, cool. That's good to know because <clears throat> that's a that's a topic on this channel that we we speak about a lot on because we want to know what the younger players, how much exposure they actually are getting to the to the four-day game, and I'm hoping that this season you'll get exposure to that um, at your at your franchise. So let's talk about your 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 franchise um, experience so far. Um, we know that you you are now with Northwest, um, but 
I want to know how that ended up happening. How were you approached um, when it came to that particular contract and getting picked up um, by them? Yeah, um, it was, again, it was a decision that I had to make if I want to be away from home, if I want to be at home. And I think I went being away from home because I'm going to get more opportunity here. Um, yeah, I went opportunity. And I'm just going to learn so much more about myself being away from home and by myself, going to mature in different ways, going to learn a lot. So, yeah, I went that route by being away from home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a tough transition. We've, It's often a very difficult decision to make. I mean, even senior cricketers have had to make that decision and decide whether they stay or whether they go. I mean, Western Province has a couple of players that have had to make that decision in recent times. You know, Jason Smith, Subair Hamza, that they've had to make those decisions to try and decide what do they stay or do they go. So I can understand how difficult it must be to decide to leave home and then go and play for uh, <clears throat> a team. And in, and, in, and Poch as well. Poch is a different type of um, environment, a different type of experience. What has it been like to settle in there? I mean, <clears throat> you obviously, you go away from the sea and that type of lifestyle to, to Poch. <laughs> what has it been, it been like? Yeah, obviously, it's a, it's a dry place. Um, there's not much to do here in Poch. I think, yeah, it's, I think it's actually nice that way because there's not much to do. Not a lot of things to do, so it's basically cricket and then friends, obviously, when I'm chilling. But I think, obviously, when I came here, I only knew one guy here in Poch, and that was Caleb. And I think if it wasn't for him, um, he made he kind of helped me settle in here in Poch. So, yeah. like, he was here every day, made sure everything was okay. So, yeah, it was, it was, I thought it was going to be tough, but it was actually quite nice settling in here. Now, I want to also talk to you about a little bit, before we get more into detail about your <clears throat> your debut and et cetera and all of those type of things, I want to talk to you a little bit about his end of 19 and, and what it was like to to obviously get selected for that side, um, what the experience was like, what you learned from the coaches, et cetera. Yeah, I think obviously representing your country at the, the juniors, it's obviously a nice experience. Um, and I think... Having Shukri Conrad as my coach, um, I think that that was also nice. He was obviously from Cape Town. So I got to train with him there and everything. With, he was in the school setup also. He kind of helped Brendan Kleinans on certain days. So, yeah, it was it was a good experience playing his under-19. Um, when it comes to a coach like Shukri Conrad, like... Uh, what what does it, what is his coach, coaching mechanisms like? Does he work more on the mental, or is he does he work on the technical, or is it the blend of everything? I think it's a blend of everything. Um, he's probably one of the calmest coaches I know. Like very very calm. Obviously, when it comes to crunch time, you must do your work. But during game like gaming environments, it's very calm when it comes to him. As players will probably be stressing, but he's just chilling. He believes in his players, whether you're batting 11, you can do a job. So, yeah, he's very calm as a coach. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I want to get now into that particular performance. I mean, we, we all know about it. You made headlines all over the place. 166 is not something that is uh, something to sleep or sleep over or whatever the case may be. I mean, it is a, was a magnificent performance, and a lot of people got to see it. And we're speaking about it. I remember coming to to Newlands for the for the for the first game at Newlands um, to watch Western Province, and there was people already speaking about it around me and I, about that particular innings that you scored. So talk me through that. I mean, scoring a massive hundred like that. What goes through your head? Um, what? Do, how do you manage to stay out in the middle and keep your concentration um, consistently? Yeah. So obviously. Uh, I got told in the week already that I'm going to be moved up to order. I'm in about three because Razor was injured. And I think I prepared accordingly. Um, I never went. During the week, I went. I practiced and I stuck to my game plan, basically, to my blueprint. And I took that into the game. I had a good week of preparation. So I went into the game with that same mindset, not to go outside my game plan, keep it simple. And... Yeah, everything worked out the way I wanted to work out. And yeah, it was 
a nice experience. <laughs> and what has it been like to settle in at, uh, at, at senior level? I mean, the, the difference, there's obviously a massive jump between under 19 level and, well, I assume that there's a massive jump from an under 19 level to the senior level. I mean, we, I can assume that always, but then you get a, a, a youngster like yourself that comes onto the scene and, and looks so comfortable at the crease. So then we start saying, is it really that difficult? But can you talk to me through that, that challenges um, about that? Because it was a magnificent innings and uh, a lot of people were waxing lyrical about it. But your transition into senior cricket, what has that been like? I mean, yes, you had a taste of it when under-19s played against um, in the knockout competition, of course. But... Uh, I want to know, like being part of a franchise now, you have all these these players around you. Some of them have played for the pro tiers, etc. You've you've got that type of dressing room. Well, how has it been to settle in as a young cricketer into that environment? I think it was good. They made me they made me feel like I'm at home. Obviously, it was it was a bit different moving into this environment, but they made me feel like I'm at home. I could be myself. So it was more about learning from these guys in this environment um obviously sometimes you you know you just want to focus on what you have to do and stuff but i think i was very open-minded batting with different guys learning from different guys and obviously working on the mental side in the nest also so yeah i think it was just about during that innings it was about staying in the moment and not thinking about the future things, just staying in the moment and do what I have to do in the moment. So, yeah. When you say you're talk, working about on the mental side in the nets, um, what do you mean by that exactly? Um, is it uh, is it certain concentration techniques or, or what is it that you guys work on to improve your mental game? I think, obviously, for me, it's, it's like I get bored very quickly so I can go into a net and just want to play shots and everything. So I think I started batting with Vian um, and he just helped me to work, like not to work on it, but helped me with the mental side of things in the nets, just to stay in it um, and not get bored. There is a purpose for the nets. There's a reason why we're having nets and it's to prepare for the games. So don't take those things for granted. It was that type of thing. So. Yeah, that was basically it. Yeah, you couldn't have better mentors around you. I mean, I know Vian quite well and a top guy, top top lad and top cricketer, top player, top person as well. Okay, so I want to ask you with regards to technical stuff because you obviously every player has their own style of play and the way they approach things. Now, scoring big scoring big hundreds is not a small thing. I've asked I've spoken to quite a few players in the past, pro former Proteas and, and and provincial players, asking them what is their technique at the crease when it comes to scoring big. Some people say they bat time. Some people say they take it over by over, ball by ball. Um, some people say they like to look at the scoreboard. Some people say they don't. So I want to ask you, um, were those things running? Do, do those things run through your mind? And what is your techniques when you, when you score big? Do you even think about it when you're out there in the middle or do you just take it? But, 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 ball yeah, I think, ball. yeah, taking it ball by ball is probably the best way for me to go about it. And then I do look at the scoreboard, like in that innings, I was looking at the scoreboard almost every over. Um, yeah, just to see where we are as a team. So there was a time where there was, it was for a long time where we needed 20 runs more than the balls. So I wanted to keep it within those margins. And then when I could capitalize and bring that margin a bit smaller. I took the opportunity. So I think it was just staying in the moment, making sure that I do my best best as possible to get my team over the line. It's a pity I obviously got out, but like I kept on looking at the scoreboard and staying in the moment. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to reading conditions, I know um, Coach Conrad is someone that, that always focuses on that a lot about being able to read conditions in, and et cetera and, make, and putting an emphasis on that. When did that become a th uh, something that you started learning? Probably this year. <laughs> Is it this year? That, I thought so. Like that's what I wanted to know. So, what what sort of conversation was it with with regards to that? <clears throat> I think it was. It's part of our blueprint, really. It's we have to um, assess conditions, 
adapt to conditions and then execute obviously so those are the three words that we go for so it's adapting as wait assessing adapting and executing so yeah it's kind of self-explanatory mm -hmm. okay cool <clears throat> and when it comes to playing different disciplines is, is there has there been obviously more focus now at a at a at this level to to how to play spin how to play swing etc is there is there emphasis on that do you get that learning yeah i think everyone obviously has their different ways of playing pace and playing spin i think i think our thing is we have our core shots so it's basically four clicker shots that when you're going through tough times when you don't know what to do you fall back to those shots it's basically your four base shots mm. so yeah it's same for me it's same for pace and same for spin okay cool so let's get into the to the live chat i uh, just want to put it out there to you that this is nothing to do with me this is just the fans that are in the live chat that are going to ask you questions um sometimes it's not always factual sometimes it is so you can correct them if if there is any mistake over there i'll try to do so too but okay so lichler wants to know did vp not offer you a pro contract is that why you left to northwest no they did they um wanted to keep me there yeah. so okay yeah just to just to clarify to you as well if you if you can't answer a question you can also say yeah. I, I refer not to speak, right? I'm not, you're not forced to answer everything, just to let you know. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Tell us about the contribution that your sax coach Brendan Klein has played in your career. Yo, I think that is a massive, probably one of the biggest. He played the biggest role, cricket wise, obviously. There's a many, like a few people that played a big role in where I am today, but cricket wise, Technique-wise, just cricket-wise, he played a massive role. I think if it wasn't for him, I don't think I'd have been where I am today. He got me. I got the grade, grade 11, I think. And from where I was in grade, end of grade 10, beginning of grade 11, to where I was, end of matric, it was a massive improvement. So, yeah. Amazing. Uh, someone that I've been trying to get on the show for a while, I must message him again because I'd like to, to, to chat to him as well. Lichler says, which modern day batsman can you say you bat like for people who's never seen you batting before? Oh, that's a tough one. <laughs> um, I'm not sure, to be honest. Okay, cool. So I'm going to spin the question. Um, who are some of the heroes that you look up to that you'd like to follow in their footsteps? From a world stage, you can talk about world stage or South Africa. I think I looked up to Quentin de Kock, um, that's number one, especially because he's a wicketkeeper batsman, and then Hashim Amla, just okay, the way he is as a person. Brilliant. Um, Cheese wants to know, who's how's Poch for you, Mika? <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's quite nice. I'm enjoying it this side, obviously missing home, but it's I'm enjoying it here in Poch. It's, it's very nice. <laughs> and what you start? Are you what you studying? Are you studying um, as well? I'm not studying. I asked okay. my parents if I could get the gap year. So <laughs> okay, <gave> cool. <laughs> you one of the lucky ones. <laughs> <laughs> how, how can you describe the JB Marks oval pitch? Look, you get you can get different wickets on different days. I think you can get anything at the JB Marks oval. Luckily enough, on not Sunday, last week Sunday. It was a good wicket. Um, so, yeah, you can get anything at that place. Yeah, as you could see with the Proteas as well when they play there, um, we get different uh, conditions there as well. I mean, when they played Australia, it was completely different to what we normally expect there. Um, Shahid says, this guy is next level. Um, actually, it's good to see talented players getting visibility through the channel. Um, oh, I didn't even read that before. I shouldn't have actually read that. One. You like ODI test, um, T20, and um, which which format do you would you like to play? I mean, is test cricket? Is that, I had to ask you that actually. Is test cricket on your on your plans or in your? Yeah, vision? obviously, I'm I'm known for white ball. Um, mm -hmm. because I'm a tactic batsman, I enjoy hitting the ball. So 50 overs and T20s is one of my strengths. 
I can say that. Mm-hmm. But test is definitely, I think that's probably one of my biggest dreams is to play test cricket for South Africa. So, yeah. yeah. I'm hoping to see you in that um, four-day team. Asha wants to know if you are related to Ashwell Prince. No, I'm not. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's why I said if you you can connect to people on these type of things, uh, because do you still have a charger? <laughs> <laughs> oh my! <word. laughs> Laura says, "I because since you recently still played club cricket, how big is the jump from club scene to the professional cricket? And do you think there's a value in club cricket as a feeder system?" Um, I think, yeah, definitely. I think if you play some Premier League cricket in Cape Town, well, I don't know how it is here. I haven't played club cricket here yet. So I think in Cape Town, I think, you know, the currency for batsmen and currency for bowlers, it's wickets and runs. So if you put a couple of good performances in, who knows, you can be in the call setup, you can be in the academy setup. And if you perform there, it's, you know, you never know what, happens next so yeah okay Cassie Adams wants to know what is it you want to achieve in cricket and how are you going to go about getting there I think I want to be obviously one of my biggest dreams is to be a pro dear so I think it's just going to take lots of hard work lots of sacrifices and I think if I put in the hard work and sacrifice, do the sacrifices that's necessary, but I think I could get there one day. And obviously, I need to score runs and do well behind the stumps because currency in cricket is key. So, yeah, just hard work. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know how premature this is, um, but okay, we know Shukri, uh, Shukri Conrad will take a, a sort of a second string side to New Zealand for a test series next year. So, do you see the upcoming domestic four-day series as a chance to stake a claim for a possible test spot for that tour? That's, that's a tough one. Because um, yeah. obviously, I'm 19 years old. Yeah. Um, I think your first step is probably to get into the four-day team. <laughs> first step is to get into the four-day team and to get in not even pro tiers. It's probably SAA, SAA merging first. So, but you know, you never know also, but if like I was talking to the guys, I think in any format, I just want to, I want to do well in all three formats to put, to give myself the best possible chance mm. to achieve my dream. I mean, you attacking batsman, of course. So T20 and ODIs, do you approach it the same? Um, obviously... Kind of the same, but obviously T20, 50 overs is a bit of a, a extended um, version of a T20 game, basically. Yeah. Obviously, there's a bit more time, but yeah, yeah. I, I approach both the same. Yeah. Okay. I know that you said to me a little bit earlier on that you um, you you, can't, you don't like to, you can't concentrate um, in the net, so I don't want to bore you too much on the show <laughs> with a long interview. But I'm going to give you the, to some of the, the last couple of questions over here that I have for you. Oliver White says, any tips to be as good as you? <laughs> you see, Oliver, Oliver is one of my mates, so he's being a planner. I thought so. <laughs> uh, but if you could give tips to, to youngsters going into high school, going into club cricket, I'm trying, that want to aspire to become professional cricketers, what sort of tips could you give? I know you're only 19 years old, but what what um, tips could you give them? I think that's that's a it's it's a tough like when people ask me that like I struggle to do that because obviously mm-hmm. we are all different we are all we have different ways of approaching things regarding cricket so I think mm-hmm. I think the only thing that I can say is work hard and give it your all because you never you never know how far you really are from the next level like. I, like I was playing school cricket last year and all of a sudden I got selected for the SN 19. So like it was, obviously it was nice, but you never know how far you are from the next level. I think just keep yeah. working hard. Give it your all. Cool. How's coach Craig Alexander? No, he's, 
He's proper. Um, <laughs> I, I love him as a coach. <laughs> yeah. So, guys, we did interview him in the previous issue of Cricket Fanatics magazine. So, go go check that out. He gives some amazing insight into into how his coaching style is, etc. Um, <laughs> uh, Connor says, "Can I get your signature, please?" Um, Karima says, "Mika, what's the the thing that keeps you going on the tough days?" Final question. Yeah, I think that's a good question. I think obviously we're not always going to have good days. We're going to have our ups and downs. But I think, you know, obviously, as a professional sportsman, you're not you're not just going to have good days. You're going to have tough days. So I think when those tough days tough days hit, um, I think that's when you need to work even more harder to get those good days again. So, you know, cricket cricket is a game of failure. But obviously, you always want to do well. So when you're failing, I think that's when you need to work even harder. Brilliant advice. Okay, um, Mikhail, thanks a lot for coming on the show and giving me your time um, and chatting to me. I mean, the, the fans have been asking for me to interview you. Um, so I'm glad that you said yes and you came on to the show. Um, good luck for the rest of the season, um, of course. And I hope that you do get into that four-day cricket team because I'd like to see you play four-day cricket. I think it will be so important to your development as a cricketer, even in your white ball game. Uh, we've heard a lot of... Um, players like David Warner even speak about it, saying that four-day cricket actually helped his white ball T20 game as well. So um, I'm hoping that it can do the same for you and all the best for the future. Shukran. Okay, and to everybody out there, thanks a lot for joining in and watching the show. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Just please, there's a couple of things that I'd like you guys to do. Please get us to that 5K mark. Um, subscribe, click that notification bell for all future videos. Don't forget to also subscribe to Cricket Fanatics Magazine monthly. Every issue is 100% free, straight to your inbox every single month. The link is on the screen as well as in the description. The latest issue currently is the World Cup edition. So please go get your World Cup edition right now. We've got some excellent articles giving you insight into from coaches, from, from players, on how they're approaching this World Cup and how they're preparing for this World Cup from, you know, from every single angle. I mean, Keshav Maharaj exclusive. There's a couple of exclusives in there that's important for you. If you want to support us at Cricket Fanatics so that we can keep on doing interviews like this, please become a patron today. Link is on the screen as well as in the description. Go to cricketfanaticsmag.com for all regular updates and like, comment, and share. Thanks to everybody for watching, and I'll see you guys again tomorrow with another daily show. We will be doing a preview shoot soon for the next game from the Proteus in the World Cup after that massive victory. But I'll see you guys all very soon. Thanks, Mikhail. Thanks to the fans for watching, and peace out. Thank you.